हेलो एवरीवन दिस डॉक्टर राजेश मिश्रा वेलकमिंग यू एट हेल्थ सुपर स्पेशलिस्ट सो मूविंग फॉरवर्ड विद आर सीरीज ऑफ निमोनिया आई थिंक इट वुड बी एप्ट टू कंक्लूड विद द वेंटिलेटर एसोसिएटेड निमोनिया बिफोर कंक्लूडिंग दिस सीरीज ऑफ निमोनिया सो व्हाट इज द वेंटिलेटर एसोसिएटेड निमोनिया वेंटिलेटर एसोसिएटेड निमोनिया इज एनी निमोनिया विच is present after 48 hours of initiation of mechanical ventilation and intubation that means the organism which was not present initially on admission has come up now after the initiation of mechanical ventilation why do the patient develop ventilator associated pneumonia first hypothesis mucociliary clearance the normal mucociliary clearance in a normal body is like uh, 10 to 20 mm per minute which means that a part of our voluntary ability to cough there is a constant mucociliary clearance from our lungs secretions foreign bodies small amount of aspirations they are constantly being cleared from our lungs at the rate of 10 to 20 mm per minute in an intubated patient decrease by 1/10 1 to 2 mm per minute is the mucociliary clearance in an intubated patient that explains the hypothesis of ventilator associated pneumonia second hypothesis aspiration we in a normal senses do micro aspiration intubated patients are at higher risk of macro aspiration despite using the best of the pvc tubes polyurethane cuffs or the micro cuffs there is constant source of aspiration so patient develops ventilator associated pneumonia so these are the two hypotheses which are very important and then again hematogenesis is already already there so hematogenous spread of infection can lead to any ventilator associated pneumonia so uh what if the patient develops a ventilator associated pneumonia the first thing that we need to do is to escalate our antibiotics now what to escalate how to escalate any patient with ventilator associated pneumonia must be on some or the other antibiotics now we have to see three things one two three first whether the patient is at risk of mortality at risk of mortality means the patient requires a ventilatory support or vasopressor support that is risk of mortality mrsa risk of mrsa infection methicillin resistant staph aureus infection who are at risk of mrsa infection the patient who have antibiotics in the last 3 months 90 days or if the prevalence of mrsa in the icu or in the uh, setting is more than 20 percentage at risk of mrsa at risk of pseudomonas who are the patient at risk of pseudomonas patient who are immunocompromised antibiotic in the last 3 months ckd on maintenance hemodialysis diabetic hypertensive and the patient who are malnourished so different guideline guidelines came up with different risk so these are the risk as per the ats 2016 American Thoracic Society 2016 WAP guidelines. Fine. So at risk of mortality, MRSA risk, pseudomonal risk. Fine. Patient not at risk of mortality. Fine. What do we what what do we give? Either a piperacillin tazobactam 4.5 gram IV QID, or we can use a imipenem or a meropenem. We can use cefepime or ceftazidime. so these are the options that we can use for patients not at risk of mortality isolated this nothing else patient at risk of mortality at risk of mrsa what do we use same antibiotics we bring here also either a piperacillin tazobactam we can use a cefepime or a ceftazidime we can use a uh, imipenem or meropenem we can use estreonam okay along with it for mrsa coverage we can use a vancomycin 15 mg per kg body weight and we can use a linid 600 mg bd linizolid okay patient is at risk of pseudomonas here comes the twist the twist is 
will use the same antibiotics because all the antibiotics that we were discussing in web they are more or less covering more the pseudomonas we have discussed the MRSA coverage now if the patient is at more risk of pseudomonas we may need to add double pseudomonas coverage easiest way out along with piperacillin tazobactam or imipenem or meropenem or cefepime or ceftazidim or estriolam what we have to add is one aminoglycoside or one furoconolone they will give good anti pseudomonal coverage additional pseudomonal coverage fluoroconolones levofloxacin ciprofloxacin studies ciprofloxacin has got better pseudomonal coverage than levofloxacin at a higher dose 750 mg levofloxacin also 750 mg the dose of cipro is less it gives better coverage at higher dosage amino glycosides either you can use amikacin gentamicin of preference cause a lot of aki we have to accept it plus the mrsa coverage vancomycin lemisolid finish that's a management for ventilator associated pneumonia the typical causative agents of ventilator associated pneumonia in indian setting streptococcus pneumonia streptococcus pyogenes rare causes common causes again common causes are pseudomonas acinetobacter klebsiella multi drug resistant very common very common in indian setting multi drug resistant pseudomonas multi drug resistant acinetobacter or mdr klebsiella supposedly the patient develops an mdr acinetobacter you are giving those prescribed antibiotics what else can you do mdr acinetobacter add a polymyxin b 7.5 lakh unit bd that's it here multi drug resistant acinetobacter will be treated multi drug resistant pseudomonas you have got here other options so even for that you can use for multi drug resistant pseudomonas you can use a tg cyclin you can use a combination therapy of meropenem with polymyxins so they work well combination therapies work well although no, not much data is available and uh, something some more drugs are coming up so uh, iravacycline is coming up imipenem silastatin relibactam is coming up uh, muripavudin is coming up so this probably these drugs will be available in the next 5 years in the market till then thank you thanks for watching health super specialist thank you very much